So just to give an example here of uh, some of the things we can do with the software, we have here a um, uh, outboard motor engine, and this housing um, was uh, thermoformed. And so we're going to show the results of a project that was uh, that was done for this application. This here is the uh, mold that was used. And because of symmetry, we only need to use half of it and save ourselves some computer time. So here's a rear view. Here's a view from the front. Um, and that's basically the shape that we, uh, that we want. Now this uh, deep draw part was done using what they call a draw or vacuum box, pre-draw or vacuum box. And so the material is first drawn into this box, and then the uh, forming is, is reversed onto the, onto the mold. So we'll show that here in this animation of the, um, of the forming. So you see the material getting drawn into the pre-draw box. The tool comes into position, and then the vacuum is reversed and the material forms onto the tool. But as you can see here, there are two webs created in these corners. This um, shows the thickness distribution. And apart from these webs and wrinkles, the thickness distribution on the part was relatively, relatively good. So the problem is wrinkles webs formed by excess material surface area created during the stretching of the part. So um, many people can speculate on the solution. The designers can look at this and see, offer uh, proposals. And, and testing all of them uh, may be um, in a, certainly inefficient and expensive. So uh, we want a more direct solution. And of course, what we want to do is remove the excess material. Now. <clears throat> The solution here was to uh, add these web catchers, as they're referred to, or simply plates in the corners that prevented this material from forming into the vacuum box. And so as you can see here in this simulation result, the blue area here represents material that can't move. And then the um, when the material forms back, there is no excess material in this region to form the web. And as a result, you'll see that we get a relatively um, uniform part created. So this is the um, final result and the thickness distribution. You can see the, the initial sheet thickness up here, about 9.5 millimeters. And the minimal thickness is somewhere in here, about 1.13 um, millimeters. And we can adjust the scale of our results to show everything below 3 millimeters. So anything that's, that's um, blue is 3 millimeters and higher. And we see that we have a thin area here in the corner. And um, if, uh, if we want to try to correct that, we could. But in this case, the trim line for the part is, is above that, and so we don't have to worry about anything below this trim line, and we produce an acceptable part. There's another example here is a large uh, sheet of clear PVC uh, that is formed to make a, uh, a large sign. That's something that you would see out on the highway or anything like for uh, service stations or um, any type of advertising. And um, this uh, sheet is formed, and you can see the thickness variation, particularly in these corners where the material gets quite thin and can be uh, rather fragile and break. Um, each one of these sheets can be up to $1,000. So performing experiments to try to achieve the correct um, or more even thickness distribution can be quite costly. And plug assist is not applicable or not acceptable for a clear um, product because the plug can leave marks on the surface. 
So in this case, what they decided to do was to do pattern heating. And TSIM has the ability to determine the optimum temperature distribution required through the part. So the user simply specifies a temperature range that they feel their heating system can accommodate. And they can put either heat shields or program the heaters, depending if they have um, zone heater set up. And then, because this material is colder, it won't stretch as much as the surrounding material. And as a result, you achieve a much, much more even thickness distribution throughout your part. This is an example of a, a plug design study. In this case, we have two plugs. One has a rounded base. And the other one has a con, uh, concave base. And we will show here the simulation result for the rounded base. And again, these results are scaled to a maximum of 0.25 millimeters. So anything that's blue uh, is 0.25 millimeter or higher. And we can see that when we have the rounded base, the minimum or the lowest thickness area the lowest thickness area is right down here in this section. Now when we use the other plug, we see that now our minimum thickness is moved to this wall and not down to this region. So as you can see, depending on the plug design, we can have a very different thickness distribution through our final part. Finally, the uh, T-SIM simulation software can also help in image distortion because once the deformation can be predicted, then uh, the deformation of an image on the surface can also be predicted. So for example, if we start off with a bunch of stripes on a sheet and go to form uh, this cup, we can see how those stripes are deformed. But perhaps more interestingly is the reverse engineering of image deformation in that once the deformation is simulated, an image can be placed on the final product and tracked back to the flat sheet. And this helps image pre-distortion um, become more efficient. So here you can see the uh, stripes placed on the final part and then that is tracked back to the initial sheet shape and how it should be printed on the uh, flat sheet in order to form that part with that appearance. So uh, CAE of thermal farming offers improved process understanding. And we can study the effect of materials and process conditions, reduced product development time. Uh, design options can be tested quickly and efficiently within the software. Reduced product development cost, uh, the number of uh, mold or tool recuts, uh, or even the wasted material that you use in developing can be reduced. And uh, pre-printed image distortion, uh, image distortion and pre-distortion can be um, performed much more efficiently. Thank you for your time. We would be pleased to take a few questions uh, for now. And if we don't get to you, you're welcome to send me your questions to either my email or give us a call at your convenience.